going to be a difference in heaven than there is in the earth. Don't be surprised when somebody talks evil about you. Don't be surprised when somebody misunderstands you. Don't be surprised when somebody don't like you. Because I never told you that you wouldn't have any enemies. I never told you that there wouldn't be any difficulty. I didn't tell you when I take you to Canaan, everything there is going to be perfect. What I told you is I'll take you out of Egypt and I'll take you into a land that is flowing in milk and honey. And when you get there, if there's giants there, don't worry about it because I told you I'll never leave you and I told you I'll never forsake you. Ever wonder, how does the word apply to your life? Can it change you? Yes, it can. The word of God can change your life. The truth is such a powerful thing. So glad you tuned in today. Uh, the truth can do so much. Set you free, open doors for you. We, we want you to get truth. You know, the word says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Of course, very famous passage of scripture there in Ephesians. Our wrestles not against flesh and blood. Have you learned by now that this is going to be a fight? Have you been alive long enough to realize that if you want joy, you're going to have to fight for it. If you want peace, you're going to have to fight for it. If you want success in your relationships, you're going to have to fight for it. If you want success when it comes to your money, you're going to have to fight for it. There's going to be a battle. You can either complain about the battle that life is, or you can buckle down and learn how to fight. And that's what I'm determined to do. Uh, I, I, I'm realizing uh, I'm going to get peace when I get to heaven. We are soldiers in the army of the Lord. And God has called me into warfare. I'm battling the devil. He better watch out. He better back up. That's what we're talking about today. We're talking about that fact that you're a soldier in the army. We want to teach you how to fight. Sit tight. We're going to talk about how to fight, how to get the weapons you need to have what the word promises you. Don't move. The title of my message tonight is The Art of War, How to Fight. Here, this passage in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, very familiar passage of scripture, especially the first part of it, that says, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. God saying through Hosea, Hosea, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Never underestimate the Bible's ability to contradict everything you have always thought. Never underestimate the power of the word. The Bible has an ability to contradict, to take the things that you've always thought, to take the concepts that you always held as sure. The Bible has a way of just turning everything upside down and taking the stuff that you used to think about, you thought of it this way, and then the Bible, the Word of God steps in, revelation comes in, that light comes on, and you actually get a chance to see that what you have been thinking or what your estimation was, not necessarily correct. And clearly, Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 is obviously doing that again, even though we may have heard this passage before, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There's all kinds of sources of destruction that we recognize. Number one, we blame the devil. It's a church thing to know how to do because we blame the devil and we can point at the devil and we can see the devil as a source of destruction. I'm not saying he's not a source of destruction. He is, and it's one of the, the very serious sources that we very quickly will recognize. We if beyond the devil, we'll recognize people as a source of destruction. We look at problems and difficulties and hardships that may come our way, and uh, we, we blame the devil, but of course it's the devil trying to get to us through people. And so we will point at people. When you look at stuff that bothers you, upsets you, or stuff that you can complain about, the stuff that's trying to stop you from being what you're supposed to be or to get to where you believe you're supposed to get to, it's very easy to point at people. We can focus on mistakes that we make. We can say very quickly, well, I'm only human. 
and I, I, I make mistakes. I, I'm not perfect. There are things that I do that aren't always the best things, and I, God understands that I'm only human. And when I was younger uh, in high school, there was this song, I'm only human, a flesh and blood anyway. And just the idea that while I'm human, I'm flesh and blood, that's that we, we can very easily point to our humanity as a source of difficulty or a source of destruction. And I, all of those, just I just named a few, and I'm not saying that those aren't sources of destruction, no doubt about it. But then the word comes in and says, well, actually, the real problem is a lack of knowledge. If, the, if my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge, what are some things that I need to know? And one of those things that you've got to know how to do is you have to know how to fight. You're going to have to know how to fight. If you don't know how to fight, you're going to be in trouble. If you don't know how to fight, you're going to have big problems. If, you are not, if you're not prepared, obviously, and we, we just looked at it at, there in Ephesians chapter 6, but in verse 13 says, to put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. The Bible is promising you a day of evil. The Bible is saying to you, there is a day of evil that is coming to you. If you haven't seen one yet, just keep on living. But I don't even have to say that because everybody in this room has already seen some evil days because these are the last of evil days. But we've seen evil days, seen difficult things that have come your way. And he's saying, don't be surprised when difficulty comes your way. Put on the full armor of God so that when the tough day comes, when the hard place gets here, you'll be able to stand your ground. The, 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 uh, this is the army of the Lord. And so when we come together, uh, a part of what is going to enable us to be what God wants us to be is I, I got to know how to fight. There's a battle that's going to take place, and you're going to have to know how to fight. And so I decided, well, Lord, uh, I, I wanted to talk a little bit tonight about how to fight. And I decided that the Lord spoke to me and said, okay, well, son, why, why don't you take a look at David and Goliath, which is a very famous story. And, and so go ahead and turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17, and we'll, we'll take a look at the battle between David and Goliath, and we'll glean from that struggle how to fight. Because there's some blessing that you're going to have to fight for. Even though God was with David, even though David was anointed, even though... David was a man after God's own heart. Even though God had a plan for David, and David killed Goliath, but Goliath didn't get struck by a bolt of lightning now. There was a battle that took place. There was a fight that happened. And I'm realizing that there are some giants, the only way that I'm going to overcome them is if I'm going to fight them. Can't have an assumption that God is just going to remove every giant from out of my path. When you look at, at 1 Samuel, and 1 Samuel is in the Old Testament of your Bible, very, very early on, after Deuteronomy and Joshua and Judges and Ruth and then 1 Samuel. So, you know, within the first 10 books of the Bible there, 1 Samuel chapter 17, and I'll just read just a few verses. It says there in verse 2, this, in case you're not, most of us should be familiar with David and Goliath, but just some of the details. Saul and the Israelites are assembled at camp in the Valley of Elah, and they drew up their battle lines to meet the Philistines. Verse 3 says, the Philistines occupied occupied one hill and the Israelites occupied another hill with the valley between them. And then a champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. He was over nine feet tall. He had a bronze helmet on his head, wore a coat of scale armor of bronze, weighing 5,000 shekels. That's about 125 pounds. So his armor weighed 125 pounds. Okay, so the, the, the man's a giant man. His armor weighs a lot. His legs are bronze greaves. That's the thing that blocks your feet. He has a bronze javelin slung on his back. His, sheer, his spear shaft was like a weaver's rod. Its iron point weighed 600 shekels. That's about 15 pounds. So the spearhead was 15 pounds. And his shield bearer went ahead of him. His shield is so big that somebody's got to carry it, okay? So, so that's Goliath, that's the giant. Let's stop there really quickly and ask ourselves the question, do you back away from a fight? That's a good question. Do you back away from a fight? What happened?
happens when the giant steps up. When the giant steps up, do you see the giant as an opportunity for you to see greatness happen or do you see it as destruction? Clearly, they saw it as destruction. And, and what the Lord is saying to me, and I'll tweet it tonight, when the Lord said, he said, Andy, with giant problems come giant rewards. No risk, no reward. No pain, no gain. No risk, no reward. It is. It, the Canaan is going to have giants in it. That's what makes it Canaan. If it wasn't Canaan, if there were no giants, if it wasn't valuable, then nobody would want it. The fact that it's valuable is the thing that makes somebody else be there. The fact that it's a great job is the thing that makes other folks besides just you apply for it. That's what makes it great. So you can't ask for greatness without giants being there. David comes down and sees the giant as an opportunity to experience victory. Let me just break it down for you really, really quickly because I'm really quickly running out of time just enjoying this, the, the, the message, just the, the scripture itself. But if we drop down to verse 23, we really do see the, the battle between David and Goliath. And I just want to point a few things out to you just for you to understand how to fight. We really can see it from this battle between David and Goliath. In verse 23, it says, he's talking with his brothers. And Goliath steps out and shouts his usual, usual defiance. And David hears him. And the Israelites saw the man, and they all ran from him in great fear. Now the Israelites had been saying, do you know how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He'll also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his father's family from taxes in Israel. So when it comes to, to how to fight, the first thing, the first step in how to fight is that there's got to be an understanding. There's got to be understanding. You see that from verse 23 right through to verse 27. They repeated to him, told him what, what's going to be done. David asks, what's going to be done for the man who kills this Philistine or removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And they repeated to him what had they been saying and told him, this is what will be done for the man who kills him. And so, number one, if I'm going to fight, there's going to have to be an understanding. Number one, I'm going to have to see the challenge. I have to be realistic. I have to know what I'm up against. Now, I, 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 you're, you're, it's not going to be just close your eyes and just pray and don't even look at the problem. You, you'll have to look at the giant problem. You have to be realistic about it. Well, I, I'm, I'm facing a realistic, no joke, difficult situation. It's a serious challenge, and I understand that it's a challenge. I'm not in ignorance. I understand that it's giant. I understand that it's big. I understand that it's hard. David had an understanding. He heard. He had an understanding. But then, of course, the other thing that he understood, and I, I mentioned it already, but he understood risk versus reward. He wanted to know what the reward would be. Okay? That's the first part of it. Then the second part of it that's really connected to it is, and, and when, it, when we're talking about how to fight, is you got to hear right. You have to hear right. And so David clearly hears right. He hears the challenge. So he hears Goliath talking. He hears the blessing. He hears what's going to happen as a result of him fighting the giant. He also hears the negative. Because in verse 28, his brother steps up and just kind of starts fussing at him, saying, you know, his oldest brother heard him speaking with the other man, and he gets mad at him and says, man, what are you doing? What are you talking? Where, where, who are you leaving few sheep with? Man, you, you just, I, you, I know you're conceited. I know you're prideful. I know, I know that you, you're not right, that, that I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. And you came down just to watch somebody get killed. He goes to meet with Saul, and Saul says to him, man, you can't, because somebody runs and tells Saul, man, there's a dude out here talking stuff about Goliath, man, and, and Saul sends for him, and Saul says, man, yeah, I, I, David says to Saul, yeah, I got this. I, I, I'll take him. I got him. And Saul says to him, man, he's been fighting since he was young, and you're just a boy, so no, this is not going to happen. You're not going to be able to do it. So that ability to hear the negative is, is, is actually a part of the ingredient in how to fight. 
And the third thing that you see is just a few more. The third thing that I see that really shows us how to fight is confidence. Confidence. In verse 34, Saul says to him, you're not going to be able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You're only a boy. He's been a fighting man from his youth. And David says to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, rescued the sheep from its mouth. It turned on me. I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has divided the armies of the living God. The same God who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. So David had confidence. Number one, he had confidence in God. He had confidence in God. He said, no, no, no. The same God that delivered me from that situation is going to deliver me from this situation because his confidence was in God, but also his confidence was in his past experiences. Confidence in his past experiences because lions and bears are pretty scary. Meaning that, that what I'm saying to you, beloved, is that the lion and the bear situations that we have dealt with have prepared us for the giant situation that we're facing. You're not going to just step the straight just fighting giants. You start off by fighting lions and bears. And so, in a sense, it gives you a reason to thank God for your trouble. You can thank him for the lion and the bear that you dealt with because it was preparing you for your Goliath situation. So you had confidence. Then the fourth thing that you see, just that we can just take from this, from this story, is that uh, you got to know uh, what, you, what your weapons are. you got to know your weapons. In verse 38, it says, Saul puts David's, uh, he dressed David in his own stuff, his own armor, and his own bronze helmet. And David tried to put his sword over the tunic and walking around, but he was not used to them. I can't go in these, he said. I'm not used to them. He took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. So you, you got to know your weapons. You can't fight with somebody else's testimony. You can't fight with somebody else's story. You can't fight with somebody else's scripture. You got to know your scripture. You got to know your word. You can't fight with my story. You got to know your story. You can't come all, well, Pastor Andy has a story. No, no, no. You got to know your story. You got to know what he's taking you through. Hey, you got to know your weapons. And I love the fact that David picked five stones because he was, what it means is that he was prepared to miss. He was prepared to miss. He didn't go get one stone. He got five stones. He went there prepared for his own imperfection. God is perfect, but you're not perfect. And so you got to be ready for the fight. He went there ready to throw more than one stone at the giant. He didn't go there to throw one stone. He went there to throw five stones. He figured, I'm going to hit this guy with one of these five stones. I'm going to knock him down with one of these five. Put five stones in his pouch. He didn't just pick one. And then the last, the last part of it, and, and I'll, I'm over time, I'll perfectly let you go. But the last part that I see is, is, is the actual struggle between them. Goliath starts talking noise and saying, am I a dog? You come to me with sticks. And the Philistine cursed David. Come here, he said, I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air. And verse 45, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will hand you over to me, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Today, I'll give the carcasses of the Philistine's army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. And as the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. And reaching into his bag, taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. And the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. David triumphed. So the last point is that David talked and attacked. How do you fight? He talked and attacked. You got to talk the right talk. You got to say the right stuff. When the situation speaks to you, you got to speak back to the situation. 
Death and life is in the power of your mouth. You can't let the situation talk you out of victory. You got to say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you're going to kill me. I'll tell you what, you're not going to kill me. I'm getting ready to kill you. Oh, yeah, you're going to overwhelm me. The devil is a liar. You're not going to overwhelm me. I'm about to overwhelm you. Matter of fact, I'm not just going to kill you. I'm going to kill everybody here. You got to know whose battle it really is. It's God's battle. With God on your side, you might as well go ahead and attack. What are you sitting around here playing, playing defense for? He didn't play defense. He didn't wait for that, for that giant to throw that spear at him. He, he got offensive. He talked and he attacked. He was offensive. You got to be offensive. You have to be offensive. There's just too many times in which we just hold on. I heard somebody say, hold on to my salvation. I said, listen, you got to do more than hold on to your salvation. You got to get offensive about that salvation. Because if all you're trying to do is hold on to it, you may lose it. You have to be offensive. You have to know how to fight. There's a battle that lies ahead, and you're going to have to know how to fight. You know, I used to get in trouble when I was a kid for saying the wrong thing, whether I said a bad word or didn't say thank you or said what when my mother called me. You know, I don't know if you had a mother like mine, but you had to answer, yes, ma'am. You couldn't say what. I got in trouble for saying the wrong stuff. A lot of the times I got in trouble for saying the bad word. One of the things that's interesting about words that we say is that uh, bad words in one family may not be bad words in another family. Uh, what do I mean by that? Okay, one of the bad words or words that are kind of offensive to us in these days and times is accountability. Uh, calm down, I know for some of us, accountability. That's almost a cuss word, it's almost a swear word. Accountability, the fact that you're going to have to be accountable to someone. See, you can't be a soldier in the army if you can't be accountable. There's gonna be chaos in the military if there's no accountability. A part of the reason why some of us are losing the battles that we're losing is that we're soldiers in the army but we don't answer to anybody. See, that's a part of what we talked about in this series. We talked about, okay, who do I answer to? Who should I answer to? Who should I be accountable to? You gotta get this serious because without accountability, and I know we live in a time in which people just wanna do what they think, they don't want to answer anyone. They certainly don't want to submit. Oh, submission, that's another bad word. They don't want to submit to anyone. But if you don't find accountability, if you don't get that place of submission in your life, you're going to find yourself in a very difficult place in God's army. So find accountability. Get the series. The announcer's going to come, and he's going to talk to you about, all right, uh, what you need to do to get this series so that you can actually learn who you should be accountable to and where you're supposed to be in this place in God. You're a soldier in the army. Know your place. Everyday life brings battles, both expected and unexpected. The secret to winning every battle is knowledge, knowing your enemy and every attack he brings. Whether you're fighting to get ahead in life, save your marriage, or become healthy, knowledge is key, and now is the time to gain all the wisdom you need. Are you ready to be equipped to win every battle that lies ahead? It is possible, and Pastor Andy Thompson can show you how. I didn't tell you that it was gonna be smooth when you got there. I didn't tell you when you got to the new job that everything was just gonna be perfect and wonderful and everybody was gonna love you. I didn't tell you that. What I told you is I'll promote you. And then when I promote you, I'll make your enemies your footstool. I never told you that you weren't going to have any enemies. I told you I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. That's what I told you. Get ready to stand victorious through Pastor Andy's brand new Art of War collection. No matter what battle you're facing, no matter what anyone says, today begins your life of total victory against anything that stands in your way. Your journey towards total victory starts with Pastor Andy's popular series, The Art of War, which includes the powerful full-length message you heard on today's program. This three DVD series provides the complete blueprint for defeating every attack you will ever face. You'll be inspired by these live presentations as Pastor Andy ministers to you to pull out your inner warrior. You'll learn how to pray like never before, 
how to cast down every stronghold and break the chains of bondage that hold back your breakthrough. You are more than a conqueror, and Pastor Andy will teach you how to become all this and more in this series. Normally valued at $50, on today's broadcast, Pastor Andy is making the Art of War series available to you for your gift of just $35. That's right, you'll receive all three life-changing messages, Art of War, How to Fight, and The Good Fight, for only $35. But wait, there's more to this remarkable offer. When you pick up the phone today to get the Art of War series, Pastor Andy will also send you a free copy of his most requested message, Fight for Family. You will feel the anointing as Pastor Andy walks you through how to protect your family through prayer, declaration, and intercession. No matter what the world does, you can ensure your family against the devil's attack. And Pastor Andy will show you exactly how to do it on this DVD. So that's Pastor Andy's complete three-disc series, The Art of War, and a copy of the single DVD, Fight for Family, for your love gift of only $35. Don't let the enemy hinder you any longer from receiving what God has for your life. It's time to put on the whole armor of God and stand your ground, fight and win every time. Don't delay, call now. I know accountability can make some of us nervous. And I, I've been there where uh, authority has been abused. People took advantage of it. And, and you can get to a point in which you feel like, you know what, I'm, I'm not gonna trust again. I can't put myself in that situation again where, where somebody can hurt me. And, and I understand that, but you have to be careful. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Just because someone misused their authority does not mean that the problem is authority. The problem was that person. You've got to find your place in the body. You, maybe a pastor hurt you, maybe a minister hurt you, maybe an elder hurt you, maybe someone in the church hurt you, but you've got to find a good church. Get in a good local church and get to functioning so that you can find your place in God's army so you can be what God is calling for you to be. You need a support system. You need people around you that can pray for you and help you and be there with you. I'm glad you're tuning in and this is great for us to work together. We are the family of God, but you've got to find that accountability. And I'm telling you, with that answerability, with that accountability, there's a power you'll have, there's a faith you'll have, there's a peace that will come when you're in the right place. I'll see you next week. Join Pastor Andy for these live events. For more information on these events or to book Pastor Andy, please visit pastorandy.com slash events. If you are ever in the Raleigh-Durham area, come experience Pastor Andy live at World Overcomers Christian Church, located at 2933 South Miami Boulevard in Durham, NC. Here at WOCC, our mission is simple, to empower people to have balanced victory for a God-designed life. Join us on Sundays at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., or 12.30 p.m., and on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We want to see you right here at World Overcomers. For more information, visit online at www.wocctrtp.com.